the myth of Orpheus, Perseus, and Medusa, biblical narratives of Judith and Holofernes, Salome and John the Baptist, stories of decapitated Christian martyrs, and many more stories of severed heads permeate the European culture. Throughout history, decapitated heads have been revered in various ways. From not exactly known reasons they were buried in prehistoric sites, to relics of Christian martyrs who died from their faith imbued with divine healing powers. Artists were quick to pick up on this motif from its beginnings. This motif reached the peak of its popularity in the works of 19th century symbolist artists who, in the new intellectual climate of Europe, instilled them with new meanings. The myth of Orpheus had several different associations, which linked it with many central issues of late 19th century art and culture. Occultism and religious syncretism gave the figure of Orpheus an elevated status as prophet, priest and initiator as a parallel for Christ. He is one of the great initiates. He is associated with both Apollo and Dionysus and in this sense represents the dual nature of man. Orpheus is both the son of Apollo and as a teacher and pacifier is identified identified with the great god of light, but he is also the initiator into the mysteries of Dionysus. The mystical initiation was thus directly connected with poetry and art. Death by dismemberment transforms Orpheus into a victim and a martyr, and sets the stage for the triumphant victory of his transcendence of death with the magical power of song and music. The symbolists found in the figure of Orpheus a profound expression of their complex aesthetic religious attitude. The head is the artist's prime faculty, not the hand or the eye, since only through it the artist can sense the ideal. Only when the head is separated from the animal instincts, sexuality, and dirty bodily functions, the thinking and intelligent part can achieve this ideal. The head separated from the body suggests a dualistic vision of man, an attempt to separate the immaterial part, the soul or the mind, from the material body. The disembodied head is capable of suggesting both duality and violence. It refers to an idea of the mind of the artist as pure, spiritual and immortal, capable of seeing beyond the limitations of the visible world. Yet, the heightened sensitivity of the artist also means that he is prone to extreme suffering. It may also refer to the notion that the artist can overcome his painful existence and use it to fuel his creative energy. In short, the symbolist depictions of the head of Orpheus can be interpreted in terms of the creative process. The head torn apart from the body symbolizes the painful yet potentially transcendent process of artistic creativity. Despite this violent undertone, they are characterized by calmness, serenity and ethereal beauty. Gustave Moreau's painting Orpheus from 1865 had a great influence on subsequent symbolist renderings of the myth. It depicts the moment of victory after the tragic death. The Thracian maiden who is holding the head in her arms and contemplating it peacefully becomes aware of its power. The head of Orpheus here is an image of the eternal isolation of the artists, misunderstood and martyred and venerated only after his death. It gives an atmosphere of melancholic mourning that is combined with the implication of the victorious transcendence of death. The French symbolist artist Odilon Redon was particularly interested in the severed head motif. As a rule, his solitary heads don't carry any specific allegorical or religious reference. They are interpreted as a suggestion without being named, the soul or the intelligence, struggling to free itself of its corporeal inheritance and to rise towards union with a pantheistic spirit. Several of Redon's disembodied heads can be identified as Orpheus. Redon's earliest rendering of the figure of Orpheus, titled Orpheus's Head, floating on the waters, is the most unusual one. The mythical poet's head is floating in an upright position with a shining white triangle or pyramid that can be interpreted as a symbol of ideal perfection. Jean Delville's version of Orpheus's head floating in water has a similar serene and mournful atmosphere. The head is placed on a lyre, and the face has an idealized androgynous beauty. The model used for the head was the painter's wife. Though probably influenced directly by Moreau's painting, Delville, as well as Redden, leaves out the Thracian maiden, which intensifies its symbolic potential. The place of the maiden is adopted by the viewer who is invited to contemplate the mystery of the severed head. What all of these images have in common is the triumph of Orpheus, whose body may be torn into bits and pieces, but the head, which contains his immortal soul, continues its song and poetry. 
The figure of Orpheus is connected with the belief that the body is a prison of the soul and that this world can be transcended by releasing the soul from the body. The severed singing head of Orpheus is the ultimate symbol of artistic transcendence, a key concept of the idealist and anti-materialist aesthetics of symbolism. The 19th century spawned various versions of femininity, from the pure subservient woman that is related to the Virgin Mary, to a demonic destructive one that is equal to pure evil. The image of the latter, a femme fatale, was particularly related to beheadings. At the end of the 19th century, the evil woman was seen as a trigger of destabilization of male-female relationships. It is documented by philosophers Arthur Schopenhauer and Otto Weininger and psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud. Their ideas culminated in the definition of castration complex, manifested physically or metaphorically, through a fear of losing one's genitals, or the fear of losing one's power and authority. This phenomenon was brought into relation with modern man's anxiety, which recognized its threat in the woman. As defined in mid-19th century literature, the femme fatale is a woman who, through rising erotic sensibility and seducing charms, is a threat to the social, psychological and sexual identity of man. Her dangerous aspect manifests through unrestrained sensibility and direct sensuality, having a lascivious effect on the male subject. The wish for a copulation results in the disclosure of a woman's destructive nature which is a hazard to man's integrity, thus leading to his corporal and moral destruction. This defined projected female fatality inspired many images of women and beheaded men, taking a disguise of traditional mythological and biblical themes. Judith and Holofernes were a common subject that projected these ideas. Shortly put, the biblical character of Judith is a widow who enters the tent of the Assyrian general and beheads him after he passes out from being drunk. In six versions of the theme painted by the German symbolist Franz von Stuck, the artist completely dispenses with the biblical narrative. Judith is a prototype of the femme fatale painted as a 1920s woman, tall, slender, strong-featured and long-necked, wearing an oriental headdress and holding an erect sword that is supported on her hip. In Gustav Klimt's version, Judith holds the head of the decapitated Assyrian general Holofernes, but once again the artist is dismissive of the narrative. With no biblical setting and no usual bloody sword or Judith's accomplice, she takes the most of the composition. Judith's face exudes a charged blend of pleasure and perversion, seductively gazing out of the painting. To the viewer, she is presented as a symbol of female erotic triumph over aggressive male dominance. Another popular prototype for the femme fatale was Salome. According to the New Testament narrative, she was instrumental in the beheading of John the Baptist. After dancing before Herod and his guest at a festival, he promised to give her whatever she asked. The girl, prompted by her mother, asked for John's head on the platter. Gustave Moreau was the first symbolist to paint the subject of Salome and John the Baptist. His sumptuous paintings of the subject stressed the corrupt and oriental beauty of Herod's court and Salome's role as an exotic femme fatale. In the most influential version of the painting, The Apparition from 1876, Salome points to a vision of the Baptist's future severed head, which is suspended above her, dripping with blood and surrounded by a halo and rays of light. As we've seen, severed heads held an important place in the imagination of 19th century artists. They became a symbol of creative genius, surpassing the limitation of death and cultural fears of liberated femininity, projected into the image of a fatal woman. These modern ideas were visualized in a way the contemporary public would understand, the characters that have been part of the European cultural tradition. Orpheus became an image of a tortured artist, and Judith and Salome a threat to the moral integrity of men.